In this video, I want to look at API or Application Programming Interface. And to understand what it is, let's think about the last videos that we just put together. And those were all about the math class. And hopefully you have seen that when you're using a method, you have to know all sorts of information about it. Not only do you have to know its name, but you also have to know what data type are you putting into it? What data type does it return? How many pieces of data do you pass to it? And what order does that data have to be in? And you can get very frustrated very quickly if you don't understand what an API is or don't realize that that tool is out there because the API explains all of those things to you so that you know exactly how a method works or even how a data value works within a class. So let's look at the definition of an API. The first part says an API expresses a software component in terms of its operation input, output, and underlying types. So what does this mean? Well, as I stated earlier, what do you need to know about a method in order for it to run correctly? Well, you have to know its name, data type in, what does it return, does it have a sequence, and how many values do you put into it? And you also have to know its function or purpose. So that's the first part and purpose of an API. The second part is an API defines functionalities that are independent of their respective implementations, which allows definitions and implementations to vary without compromising the interface. Whew, that's a lot to say, but it has a simple meaning. Hey, I have math.square root. When I give it a number, it returns the square root of a number. Do I know how it works? Do I care how it's implemented? No, I just know that when I use it, it works correctly. And what this allows for the designer of math.squareRoot is to say, hey, right now I have this one way of finding a square root. Let's say in two years later, I come up with a far better way and it's going to speed up the time of how the method is calculating the square root. Is that going to change anything about the API? Is the API going to say, oh, this was implemented one way, now it's implemented another way? No. We don't know what's happening behind the scenes, nor do we care, nor do we want to know. We just want to know, how does this method work for us? And I pass in a 16, I get out a 4. If it works twice as fast as it did before, it's not going to affect or compromise what the API says. The API is going to remain unchanged. So next, what I want to do is I want to show you how to find an API. And then after we do that, we're going to look at and play around with how an API is formatted and what information you can glean from it. Let's talk about how to find an API. You can usually find an API embedded inside of your development environment, whether you're using Eclipse, NetBeans, IntelliJ, or some other popular development environment. But what I want to show in this video is how to do it using a search engine like Google, because it's a common way that everyone can see the same information and a common way to evaluate an API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in API and then I'm going to say the language that I'm looking for, which is Java. And then I'm going to say, what specifically am I looking for? And I'm looking for the math class. And then I'm gonna put a seven in there just for a version number. You can look at older or newer versions. If you know what version you're looking for, you could just put a seven there, eight there, or whatever the newest version is. Now this is what a standard API looks like with Java. You have all of this information up here about the math class, and we're really not going to investigate that much. What I really want to show you about an API is how to read about the methods and the fields or data values inside of a class. And you can see them all listed here, and they're listed in alphabetical order. And you'll notice each one in and of itself is a link. And so if I click on that link, you'll notice that it's anchored to information further at the bottom, which gives more insight into that particular method or data value. Now let's go back to the slides and see if we can break down the information that we're seeing on this particular API. One of the things that an API covers are methods. And we're going to look at a few methods and see how the API spells out everything you would ever want to know about a particular method. So we're going to start with the square root method. And I've shown how to use the square root method inside of a program. And I've also shown all the information that you'd want to know about it. Its name, what data type do you take in, what data type does it return, does it have a sequence, and how many values do you pass to it. If you look at the online API, this is what it looks like. And I'm going to show you that it has all of the values that I just mentioned in the table above. So if we're looking for the method name, it's right there. Notice that it is a link. 
Next, we have the data type in. It says, hey, if you're going to use it, it has to take in a double. You could take in an int, but it will convert it into a double. It says, what is returned? It is going to be a double. What is its sequence? Well, it doesn't have a sequence because it only has one value coming into it. It would have to have more than one value for it to have a sequence. And what's its quantity? How many values are going into it? Well, you can also see it in the same place. It only has one value coming into it. And then finally, we say, well, what is its purpose? And you can see it returns the square root of a value. That's what I wrote. But if you want a more accurate answer, always go to the API. And it says it returns the correctly rounded positive square root of a double value. So you can see how the API lays out everything you would want to know about this particular method. Let's look at another example. As we see in this example, abs, which stands for absolute value, is overloaded, meaning it has the same name, but it has two different implementations. Well, this is what it would look like inside of the API. It would list it out twice. And you can see that this one takes in an int and returns an int, whereas the next one takes in a double and returns a double. So if a method is overloaded, it's going to list both of them. So if you see multiple methods with the same name, you'll know that it's just an overloaded method. So there must be something different in its implementation versus the other one in the same list. Let's look at math.pal. Math.pal takes in two values, and we see that they're both double values. But what I want to point out in this method is that it returns the first value raised to the power of the second value. Now, what if I wanted more information about that or more clarity on what the arguments are? As I said earlier, the name is also a link that's going to tell us more information about it. So if I was to click on that inside of the API, it would link me down further and it would look something like this. At the bottom of the page, it would say pow. Now, I've taken a little bit out of the explanation, and I've indicated that by these ellipses right here. But what I really wanted to show you is you can see that when you click further, it tells you more about the parameters, that A right here is the base and B is the exponent. So if you want to know more about a particular method, all you need to do is click on it and it'll tell you more information, especially about the parameter value. The next one that I want to look at is math.max. And you'll notice that I have shown you two overloaded methods, but there's actually four overloaded max methods. And you can see the only real difference between the four of them is one takes in a double, one takes in a float, one takes in an int, and one takes in a long, and they all return the same respective data type that they take in. There's another point that I want to make about the max method. That is, why can't I take in three values? The API is going to show you all of the variations of a particular method. And you'll notice, where am I getting this quantity two from? Well, you can see, no matter what overloaded method uh, max that I'm looking at, none of them allow for three values to be taken in they only allow for two values to be taken in. That's how I can know with surety that I cannot pass more than two values to this particular method. Another method that I wanted to show you is floor, and the floor method rounds down. Well, usually when you're thinking of rounding, you think it returns a whole number. But how can I know that it doesn't return a whole number? All I need to do is look at the API, and I can see that the data type returned is a double. And so that's why I get 10.0 and not just 10. The same thing is true for the round method. I know that the round method is not returning an integer value, but rather it is returning a long. And if I don't have this typecast here, it is going to cause an error because I can't take a long value and smush it in to an integer. There's one more thing that I want to show you about the round method. And like I said earlier, you can click on the name of the method and it's going to give you more information. And what I wanted to point out is if I were to click on round, I would get all of this information here. And I want to focus on specifically special cases. And so if you're having an error and you just cannot figure out where that error is coming from, it does a great job to be able to click on it and say, hey, what if I'm returning a value that's bigger than a long or smaller than a long? Well, what is it going to do? And it tells you exactly what it's going to do right here in the special cases. 
So you can see, the further you look into it, the more information it's going to give. If it's a well-written API, it's going to give you anything you would ever want to know about using that particular method and how to stay away from causing errors with that particular method. Not only does the API have methods inside of it, but it can also have data values. And two data values that we have here are pi and e of the math class. And this is what it would look like in the API. And you'll notice it says specifically what data type that particular value is. So we know that pi and e are of the data type double. And we also have their definition. And again, their definition is giving far more information than what I have written there. And so if you want exact information about a particular item, go to the API. So APIs are tremendously helpful if you are trying to find out about a particular method or class inside of Java. They have other uses, but I focus specifically on those two things in this video. So the first part of an API is saying, what are its inputs? What are its outputs? How could I get an error if I use this? How many values can I pass to this? What is the sequence of the values? What do each value mean inside of the method? The second part just simply says, we don't care how the method works. We're just going to tell you what it does. And so there's hiding here because you can separate the design or how it's implemented versus what it does. And so you don't have to worry about how it's implemented. You only have to worry about how it functions. We showed you how you can find an API using a search engine. And I also said that they are embedded inside of integrated development environments like Eclipse, NetBeans, IntelliJ, or many others. But I use the internet search to show a common way to find them. And lastly, realize that APIs, they'll be updated. As the Java language changes, so too do APIs. If you ever have a problem with a method or a data member, and you cannot figure out where in the world this error is coming from, the best place to go is to look at the API. And if you know how to read it and what to look for, you will most likely find your problem. And it'll lead to better coding and a better understanding of the particular function that you're trying to use.